What's going on everyone? Today we'll be covering carbocations and their stability. And trust me, you guys are going to want to stay tuned for this video because carbocations are really important in organic chemistry and they're never going to go away. So we want to master them now. Let's go. Alright, so to kick off this video, we're going to first start off by defining what a carbocation actually is. And carbocations are just going to be carbons that have positive charges due to having an incomplete octet for missing electrons. So... I drew two examples right here. These are actually going to be the same molecules, except this one is going to be in bond line structure, which is something that we just need to be familiar with. So, as we can see here, carbon only has three bonds. And we used to, and carbon is supposed to have four bonds if it doesn't want to have a charge. But in this case, it has three, so it's missing electrons, so it's going to be a plus charge. Same thing here, because and because there's a plus charge on this molecule right here, we actually know that there's only one H here. Because if there was two H's, then they would have four bonds and there would be no plus charge. So for example, actually, so for a molecule like this, this would not be considered a carbocation, even though it's a carbon, because there's no plus charge. It has four bonds, so it has a fulfilled octet. Alright, so for the, rest of, for the rest of this video, we're going to go over carbocation stability, and then we're going to do practice problems to identify which carbons or which carbocations are more stable. Let's go! All right, so to kick up carbocation stability, I created the carbocation stability ranking for you. I'm going to go and explain all of them. And it can be a little bit confusing at first, a little bit overwhelming. But trust me, it's going gonna, it's gonna to become a little bit easier. And I would say to mem memorize this is a little bit easier, but you can also try to understand it. That way you don't really have to memorize it, right? So when we're looking at carbocation stability, what is the, the main contributor is going to be induction and resonance okay so the main thing with induction is that when we look at primary carbocations or secondary or really any type of these um carbons other than the methyl we're going to see that we how we, that we're always going to be connected to at least one carbon and carbons are going to be electron donating groups so they're going to be able to donate some electron density to the positive charge to be able to neutralize it a little bit more right so instead of having a really really strong positive charge in one area it's going to donate some electron density so they can be able to spread it out a little bit more, right? So if you take that logic, right? If we have multiple electron donating groups, we're going to be able to spread it out even more, right? So for the secondary, we have multiple electron donating groups because we have two carbons. Secondary, two carbons. Primary, one carbon. Same thing with tertiary. Down here, we have tertiary. We have three carbons donating electron density to the positive charge to, to be able to neutralize it a little bit further than the secondary or primary right and the reason why methyl is the least of the least stable carbocation it's just mainly because it has no carbons that donate any electron density right so one thing you might be looking at that might be that might appear a little bit odd or out of the ordinary is that we actually have a primary benzylic and allylic before or at least or less stable than a tertiary carbon and again, this is really just going to depend on your teacher. I've, I've seen different professors teach it differently uh, with having these two flipped. But again, just see what they say. And the same logic is going to apply to all these. So when we're looking at primary benzylic or allylic or just benzylic and allylic in general, the reason why they're so stable is not really the induction effect per se, right? But it's rather that we're going to have resonance throughout the molecule, right? And one thing I want to point out is that for allylic and benzylic structures, we want to make sure that the positive charges are never going to be on the double bonds, are never going to be on the ring for benzylic. So if we had the positive charge right here, this would not be a benzylic, this would not be a benzylic structure. Similarly, if we had the positive charge right here, this would not be uh, an allylic structure. Or, if we had the positive charge right here, it would not be benzylic structure. And I'll show you why in just a second, right? So the reason why these are so stable is just because of resonance. So if you look, and this was able to move over, we would have something like this, which could go in even further. And I'm not gonna draw them all out, but just so you can get a taste and an understanding of why this is so stable this benzylic structure is able to spread out the charge throughout the entire molecule so now it, instead of it being really concentrated in one area it's not really concentrated anywhere because it, it's it's very easily able to spread out across the entire molecule similarly we have the allylic structure and this can just be spread across the molecule the same way so if you look 
now we're gonna have the positive charge on the opposite end so now it's spread across the molecule you can do something like this if you want to picture it like this so now the positive charge is spread across the entire molecule right okay so i just want to explain why they're so stable and why these carbocations are special but to hop back into the ranking okay so we're going to have a primary benzylic and allylic as greater than the secondary carbon carbocation but less stable than tertiary carbocation then we're going to have secondary benzylic allylic as the second highest or the second most stable carbocation then we're going to finally have the tertiary benzylic and allylic as the most stable carbocation that you can have and again these are going to be more stable for the same reason that secondary is more stable than primary not only does it however not only does it have the induction effect where we have these carbons donate electron density to the to the positive charge to be able to neutralize it a little bit better but now we also have resonance right so we have the induction effect and resonance and that's why these allylic and benzylics tend to be more stable than the regular primary secondary and tertiary carbocations with the exception of the primary benzylic and allylic all right so now that we have that down and you guys i recommend that you guys screenshot this right here so you can always have a list to refer back to um we are now going to hop into some examples to be able to compare different types of carbocations and their stability let's go all right so to hop into some practice problems we're going to start off with these two molecules right here and we're just going to compare them okay so when we look we have to first identify what type of carbon the carbocation is on so if we look at the first one we see that this is going to be a tertiary carbocation right we look at this one we see that this is going to be a secondary carbocation and again don't let don't let it confuse you just because it's the carbocation is next to a ring does not mean it is benzylic 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 structures have to have the conjugated pi system the three double bonds going around the ring okay for the case of a six-membered ring it always has to have a conjugated system so if there's ever a plus charge next to a ring without a conjugated pi system then we're not going to have a benzylic structure this is going to be an ordinary secondary carbon so because we have a tertiary versus a secondary we know that this one is going to be the most stable so we can go in and draw with a greater than sign okay so then if we look at this one all right we can do the same thing again let's identify what type of carbon this is so we see this is a tertiary carbon once again and our tertiary carbon cation now here we see a primary allylic, right? So we know with the weird exception, and again, it's going to depend on the teacher because some teachers teach it a little bit differently. Some teachers believe that allylics, all allylic and benzylic are more stable than tertiary carbons. But this is the way I learn it from my experience. I've seen more teachers teach it this way. So because it's a, because it's a tertiary carbon versus a primary allylic, we're going to go with this one being more stable than the primary allylic. The tertiary carbon being more stable than the primary allylic. Okay. And one thing I want to, another thing I want to point out is that some teachers also teach it differently where benzylics are more stable than allylics. But in my experience, I have learned, and, and in my experience, I've seen more professors teach it this way, that allylic and benzylic structures are going to be very similar in stability. And they tend not to compare them because they're so similar. So don't worry about that. Okay, so finally, when we're looking at this carbon, we see that we have another tertiary carbocation, while here we're going to have a secondary benzylic. So because it's secondary benzylic, we have a, not only do we have a lot of induction, we also have a lot of resonance, right? So we know that this one, the ter that, that the secondary benzylic is going to be more stable than a tertiary carbon. Okay, guys, so thank you guys for watching. Uh, I'm going to give you another chance to screenshot this right here, the ranking, just because it can help you always look back, have a reference page. But just let us know if you have any questions or comments down below in the comment section. I hope this video helped you guys at least a little bit. And let us know of any other topics that you guys want us to cover. We out. Bye.